original co-host uh, had some issues and uh, he's going to try to work them out. But uh, Van Palacio stepped up, man, much appreciated. And in-house we have Chachi Palace Fights, Richard Goodman, the matchmaker, talk about a lot of stuff coming up. It's a good show. So uh, tell, tell a friend and uh, hang on tight because we're going to get into it now. How you guys doing? Good. Absolutely great. All right, man. Uh, first of all, Van, hadn't seen you for a while. Yeah. I know uh, you took a little trip and everything like that. What's your status? What's going on? With um, you? Took some time off. Um, just got to, I mean, sometimes you got to hit the reset button in your yeah, life. And exactly. uh, when, went home, buried my mom, got that over with. Um, oh, sorry about that. Nice. Man. You know, she passed away a year ago, and then we did wait a year to do life celebration. And, Got to roll, do some roles in Novignal on the low. I mean, I got to do a bunch of different things. Do all the yeah. So, I mean, being back is a good thing. Um, got to reevaluate where I'm at um, as as a fighter for the future. And uh, I want to do a couple more and then put that in the books and then do, you know, continue watching and going out to the Palace of Sport and that because it's. <laughs> right on. We it's, get, yeah, we definitely do. We got to support these people that. You know, support this community and, and has that stuff like that available. If you don't go out to these fights, man, don't bitch when they don't have any. Exactly. You know, it's just that simple. Exactly. That's, simple. That's what pays the bills. And I mean, you know, I've been, what, October will be 17 years that I've been covering our events down there. And I have never, ever uh, been in a situation where I wasn't looking forward to a fight yeah. there. And, uh, and I think just the, the generation of people back then, uh, it was more, it was an event, obviously. It was rough uh, too, though. But they <laughs> celebrated like that. There, there was so much hype. Yeah. You know, now times are a little bit different. The economy's a little bit different. Um, there's, you know, hiccups now, but there's making adjustments uh, where it's going to be a real, you know, beneficial in the future. It just takes time to for the results to come just like anything else when you make adjustments. Um, Richard, give us a little bit more info on that, man. You know, uh, it, MMA, it has its ups and downs in, in any area you're at, the way I look at it. So just for Tachi, for instance, um, it went through a few periods, you know, where the ticket sales had slowed down a little bit. So that's why we had to do some revamping and stuff. But primarily that comes from all the local fighters we're sending to the next level. Exactly. You run out of the Chad Mendes, the Perez's, and all the guys because you're building them up so fast and they're gone. So it takes time to find those next high school wrestlers, those other kids from the gyms, the next, you know, Avaloses and, and those guys, you know, that are coming up through these systems and stuff. So I think sometimes MMA goes on its little spikes in, in certain regions and areas just because of how much talent you're pulling and sending and taking to the next level. So I think we went through that little spot. But this year so far, both of the shows, I mean, have been sellouts pretty much. I think I had like 19 tickets left for the show in February and less than 100 left for the, the first amateur show we did. Yeah. And this one right here, I don't even, I think there's maybe 35 tickets left at the casino right now. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. And even talking about that, I mean, you guys, uh, you know, you, anybody that lives in the area um, and, and frequents Lemoore or, or in the surrounding area, you can see where the tribes actually, you know, they're getting, they have their money and they reinvest Mm -hmm. and everything so with that reinvestment which is smart that's a, that's kind of like a, a guy that has a car lot and redoes his reconditioning from some other guy down the street and spends an average of what 10 grand a month why not have your own mechanic funnel it right back yep. so basically that's what they're doing they're being smart so you do have to make adjustment uh, unfortunately some programs take a little hit but it's just a moment in time mm -hmm. you know or it's going to make adjustment but what they're doing in these uh, upgrades to the casino uh, is beneficial where it's like a one-stop service you know where it is a family stop now yeah, too. Yeah, yeah yeah exactly so it's not just a casino to go drink and eat and, and have entertainment now you can bowl so while they're building a bowling alley movie theaters gas station yeah i mean it's just non-stop i mean how many times center eventually have you went there and Gamble a little bit, win a little bit. It's shit. I only have five bucks. Hopefully, I win because I don't have money for gas. Now <laughs> they make it a little bit available right there down. You can even go inside, may win more gas or money inside That's the, the gas machine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> inside there too. So yeah. it is kind of cool. I noticed that. I was there a couple of weeks ago and went in there, and my wife goes, 
shit, they got the slots in here too. Yeah. So I wonder what happened. Like, where were you been? She goes, they have slots in there. So, yeah, exactly. But but that's 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 pretty good. I've never been in there. I'm always outside. But uh, she told me that she was surprised. She she, oh, yeah. she, she said that this is pretty good. Oh, investment. Smart investment. Yeah, smart hell investment. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. You might as well get into that business, especially when you have enough customers and people out there on the property that have to drive five or ten minutes to the closest gas station. Yeah, it, it's you a know? service, and basically, to me, it shows a lot of respect to the people that are coming to spend their good money there, mm-hmm. that you're taking care of them, make it yeah. more convenient Tax free to wherever they decide yeah. to go. Yeah. They want to spend the night, they got a place to sleep. Exactly. If they want to bring their kids, they can have a place to take them, yep. you know, whatever. So Pull I think that, that's really I mean, smart. Yeah, yeah. That, that's pretty cool. And um, the question I want to ask you, I know now they have that outside dome. Mm-hmm. I know years ago they had like that tent, mm-hmm. but this dome is a little bit more state of the art. Mm-hmm. Is there any possibility that future fights be able to maybe next year uh possibly uh this year uh definitely not um it's just uh we've already had everything set out kind of like concert year. type stuff right yeah now. they yeah concerts and stuff they're doing out there um but the fights are just a little bit different than everything else just because of the setup you know Dude. concert you have a front stage you have everything coming backwards the fights you have the center stage with everything surrounding it and then when you have com- people competing and stuff like that, weather conditions and all those things play into factor. When you're having a concert, it don't matter. Wind, rain, snow, those guys can still do whatever they're doing. Yeah, it's exactly. not going to affect them from winning or losing or being the difference of something happening that could af- affect the outcome of a fight or have something shut down if you get some water inside there, muddy parking lots. Just you know. But I would say next year there definitely could be a possibility that we do go out there and use it uh, just depending more middle of the year just yeah. to have better weather. Yeah, exactly. Because it can get really, yeah. really hot in there because it's open. And also in the winter it can get really, really cold. Yeah. So My first two exactly. fights were outside. One was yeah. in the, the tent. Oh, it yeah. was 40-something degrees when I was fighting mm-hmm. out there. And then You're seeing your breath when you're walking down the ring. How's oh, yeah. No, I in August. Yeah. And the, the vinyl was so hot. It was, they were telling us, it. They told us to walk and put some water down where you're going to be at. Yeah. And I'm like. Yeah, you got it. That's why I said it. So. That's why I'm, I'm kind of against those uh, outside because I've actually refereed a fight for uh, Gladiator Challenge. Uh, but... Um, uh, what's that casino up in Sacramento? Not Thunder Valley, but another one they used to do. Red, Red Hawk? Red Hawk, yeah. yeah. And uh, it was so hot out there that the first, I wasn't reffing that fight, but the kid, I was checking him as they come in. As soon as he stepped foot on his mat, his feet like oh. stuck to it. Mm. And he had blisters immediately. And so after that, I was just like, wow, this, you know. And of course, they're like, keep going. And I'm like, no. Mm, you know, so no. I, I <laughs> wetted the hole. I've got a bunch of towels and wetted it on the mat. But even then, that water starts to get hot too. So it, it's, it's just boiling it's just, the it, worst. It, exactly. Yeah. So it just becomes a hassle, and it's just not yeah. worth the risk or the fighters. You know, yeah. when we have a nice, cool venue inside yeah. the, the Bingo Hall, I mean, it's perfect. It's hey, let's stop place. right there. Let's go ahead and turn the page back a little bit, man. Kind of a little bit about yourself, how you started uh, at the beginning to to where you are now, man. Let these people know. There's so many new kids out there that know something maybe within the what last five years last two years but bring them back they see richard goodman oh, he's the guy from touch he's the matchmaker and stuff and some you know matchmakers whatever they always get criticized or promoters always they don't think you guys know what it is to be them tell yeah. us a little bit about your history man i mean i've definitely <laughs> went through the ropes you know How boot camp yeah man. i mean uh first i when i got all the military and i moved back to porterville I started training with Mark Lawley and Jason McCoy and, and Greg Rogers <coughs> at Team Rampage in Porterville. And uh, after about six to nine months, we just decided to start trying it out and see what happens. You know, went out there, got my arm broke almost by Joe. First fight, which, you know, they yeah. pulled a good one on me. They told me it was an amateur fight. Didn't pay me no money. He got paid money. And they counted and tried it. Well, actually, it's not even on my shirt dog record, though. Oh, okay, yeah. So I never it's see just it once that you had to be there that know that. Yeah. You know, because before that, he was like on a tear. Yeah. And then at that time, I was like an advisor with those guys, yeah. Mikey Ford yeah. and, and all those guys. Yeah, I almost fought him, too. Yeah, yeah. And, then I, yeah. and then when they said, I said, hey, I good was pretty good. But Tom Owens goes, let's put him to the test. Yeah, he wants absolutely. To fight him. So we did it, and it happened. And, you know, he, he, that was my first fight, actually. Yeah, yeah. So Joe was it, my first fight, so and then like, after that, like I said, they told me it was an amateur yeah. fight. They didn't pay me no money. I sold a hell of a lot of tickets, obviously, because I'm from Porterville. Yeah. And then that's when I realized how the business works. Right. 
and and so then I got smarter about it and you know I fought six more times after that sometimes I fought twice in one week when I fought Manny Tappy in Las Vegas and then flew back down and fought uh, Candido Estrada that following Sunday uh, eight days later uh, in Portable in the main event so yeah I've got to experience that I, I mean I worked with Ground and Pound Fight Gear too when they were uh, selling clothes and doing uh, sponsorships and stuff I started yeah, yeah. that's kind of how I started booking fights yeah. was I was actually helping Pat uh, reach out to guys to sponsor and stuff and then at that time Christian was hitting me up so I was like well shoot you're sponsoring these guys I might as well plug him with him yeah and you start making these connections and then you start getting these contacts and then next thing you know I was give, gifted an opportunity by Christian to to become a matchmaker but yeah before that I was selling t-shirts in the parking lot fighting doing whatever I could Helping fighters get fights, going to gladiators, doing whatever it was, refing, helping, just anything I could do to be a part of the business until right on, it finally man. got to a point where it became a full-time job. That's good. Yeah, I've been to, I mean, outside of, well, Gladiator Challenge for sure, because I know when you were, you were doing that uh, before they moved out here, mm -hmm. and then Tachi, and then even, um, uh, what was that? Uh, Cage Combat. Yeah, Cage I remember Combat. I remember going to Woodward Park. Yep, I did there. that show. That was show. an awesome yep, show. Yep, I did two of those out there yeah. uh, with Todd yeah. Todd Mittendorf yeah. and his brother Tolly. And uh, Rick Morrigan was a co-like uh, promoter in that area uh, as well. But, yeah, I've, I've got to experience a lot of the biggest, smallest, biggest shows. Yeah, around here. Around the United yeah. States, really. Yeah. Even because around here is bigger than any of these shows that you go to in Texas or yeah. any of those places. Because those are really hole-in-the-walls. Yeah. You know, and so it, it's you know it, it was cool. I got to travel around. I, I mean, like I said, I went to every King of the Cage and Gladiator Challenge from New Mexico to California for a period of about two years while I was injured and I had my shoulder surgery. Uh, so because I was doing the ground and pound stuff, and he was at I booked all his venues to work. Oh, so wow. he had a schedule already ahead of time where all the events we were traveling to Silver Legacy, oh, you know, wow, yeah. all these different places. So every week we were on the road basically setting up booths, strike force, all those places, just setting up booths and getting it going. And I would just book the, you know, and Pat would take care of me for helping set everything up, selling clothes, doing whatever we got to do. You know, I got the gift of the gap sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> that Those are good times, man. I'm telling Loved you. Loved it. Oh, yeah. It, it was awesome. Yeah. And it didn't really matter. I mean, especially we were associated to of uh, the team in Portland. It was the team, mm -hmm. you know, the Rampage. I mean, you know, you had uh, McCoy, who actually fought too. A lot of people don't know. Uh, three times. Yeah, Mark yeah. Lolby actually fought, yeah. you know, fought out there, and Big Greg too. Yeah, fought so it's times. like that was the team, and then even got to the point where Gladiator Challenge came to town. Yeah. The weigh-ins were held there. Yeah. Man. It yeah. was at their facility. You'd go yeah. there. And, I have favors here. Everybody. I mean, you know, who's yeah. who, whatever is in there, man. That was that was kind of cool, man. I miss I miss those times. Yeah, no, it was a, it was definitely an interesting era at that time. It was a lot different, you know, than it is now. Uh, a lot. Did you ever have a fighter switched on you right before your fight? Oh, absolutely. I, I, I have to I, me twice. Well, I only <laughs> no, fought. I, like, I would only say two of my fights out of the six were actually scheduled fights, you know, yeah. and that was um, Candido. And then uh, my second fight, uh, Mike something, tall, skinny, Mike Career or something like that. I can't remember his name. He trained down at Joe Stevenson's gym. Uh, those were the only two fights that were, I was actually booked on the poster, and it happened. The rest of the fights were like, they called me literally for Bobby Gamboa like three days before the fight, and I was with Nuno, Tony Amas. Yeah. And I was like, hey, let's go run around Veterans Park. If I make it around there, I'm good. Let's fight. <laughs> let's run so it. I ran Veterans Park. I didn't feel tired. I was like, all right, let's do it. So I took the fight, drove down there the next day, weighed in, fought the day after. You my, know, my first MMA experience was out in L.A. They had a show, and they had it at the, I can't remember the name of the club, the Platinum Club. Oh, yeah. And they were like, hey, come down to the kickboxing match. And I'm like, all right. So I get there, weigh in with the guy. Well, the guy, same day wins, it was an amateur show. Yeah. The guy didn't want to fight. So they said, hey, can you pancreas? Yeah. I'm like, I don't even know what it is. Don't even know. Let's we'll, we'll, we'll bite him. And I'm yeah. like, you just, you just got to punches to the body. Body punches and yeah. just don't punch him in the face. And I was like, all right. And I'm like, I'm learning as I'm going. And that yeah. was that was the fight scene back in the day. And it's evolved to the point where the casino would, that has legit facilities mm -hmm. and you have amateur shows there. Yeah. I mean, that. I don't think the, the, the kids coming to them now don't realize what they're getting out of it. Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, we... I've been there WC 13. I yeah. Mean, back yeah, when, you know, yeah. we weighed we weighed in outside at 105 degrees outside the venue. Exactly. You know, I yeah, mean, and no. I think we're spoiled to have 
to have a, a guy. The way it is now, it's spoiled. It's, it's literally because it a is. lot of them don't realize what you had to go through to get them facets yeah. that, that are here now. You know. Yeah. You know, and but that you know, it's spoiled. But it's also understandable too. Yeah, exactly, because like I said, anybody before us worked hard to get to this point. We worked and pushed it onto the next point, and we're continuing to develop. Yeah. And so some of these guys are getting smarter with their careers too, though. Back then. You know, you could make it to the UFC at, at eight and five. Right. You know what I mean? Just because you were entertaining and you and you beat some good sure, guys, right. but you might have lost some good guys too. You know, <laughs> you they know. took that into consideration. Now, you have to almost be undefeated or catch a last minute notice thing, or you know, they're not really just going out there and picking you up anymore unless you you're, like I said, undefeated, have something kind of special proven, about yeah. you, yeah. or you took a last minute fight, or you jumped in on Dana White's show on Tuesday. You know, it's not like it was before where they were just left and right, just boom, boom, they needed fighters. Now their roster's getting full to they don't have enough shows to keep well, up the, with that. The amount of people that are that are doing the sport now mm -hmm. um, and the reputation that the, the Palace has been able to hold, that yeah. they, they, it's not a stepping stone. It's a carry. You have to kind of go through here yeah. to go to a next level. It is. It's it, a proving ground. It is. It, it still is, you know, to I, this I, day. I fought there many times, and I've seen friends go beyond me, and – it's just insane the amount of the caliber of fighter. I mean, my first fight back, I, I'm sitting and Alex is telling me, hey, you know, I saw you train one day. Alex Perez says, do this, this, and this. Just stay back. Wait two minutes. Yeah. I said, two minutes. He said, I'll hit the, I'll, I'll hit something or yell. Just wait two minutes. I'm yeah. like, All how right. do you know that? You exactly. Know? And then yeah. now he's the UFC and he's balling yeah. out. It's yeah. just insane. Yeah. No, it, it's, you know. The IQ of the fighters. Yeah. Chair, fighters you know? IQs are up there. They have good coaches, good management, good things like that that play factors into where you're going to go in your career. I mean, you can be the most talented person in the world, but if you don't have somebody representing you that has contacts, right. it doesn't matter. Exactly. Like I said, I guarantee you there's a bunch of future UFC champions that just can't even get a fight mm -hmm. just because they either aren't marketable, they don't sell tickets, or they don't have good management that's taken care of. Right. And so people kind of forget how important those things are. It's a business as well. Yep. You know, And if you don't have good people on your team all the way around, you're going to struggle, Yeah. period. Yeah, it is, and then there's a lot of them young out there think they can do it all too. Mm -hmm. Don't oh, work yeah. that way, man. Mm -hmm. Don't work work that way. No, it's tough. But uh, unfortunately, you see a lot of careers mm -hmm. crash like, I, I like that too. So. Yeah, it, it's it happens, you know. But like I said, it's my job to make fights. It's your job to to, to show up and fight. And if yeah. they want the matchup and they like it, they're there. If they don't, then no big deal. We'll move on to the next person that's ready to do it. 90% of the fights are all fairly matched anyways. You know, you always get those last-minute things where shit happens and you yeah. have to make adjustments sometimes that you're not happy with. But from the beginning to the end, when you set those fights, you know they're they're hard to pick. Yeah. You know, you're never going to walk into my bout sheet and just be like, oh, he's winning for sure, he's winning for sure, he's winning for sure. It's, uh, it's always, oh, man, I can't believe that guy won. Oh, shit, right. you know. Ooh. It's a gamble. It's a gamble. It <laughs> is. Right you on. Know? You know, and that should so be that's like one thing that. I try to, try to yeah. do as much as possible is keep it, Keep it balanced, you know. And Let's keep it fair for. Yeah. I mean, for both fighters, because if they both put on a good performance, even in a loss, that still can carry. That still can carry you exactly. And how so, you perform in losing is as, is just as important as how much you win. Right. If you have bad performances and get your butt kicked, you, it's it's hard. But if you're putting on a show and you're entertaining and you're doing things and people like that and they see no matter what. You know, you're going to make it still. You know, guys like Phil Veroni, look at our perfect example. Yeah. Yeah. He got signed back to the UFC coming off three losses. You know, yeah. that's great management too, though. Yeah. Exactly. Like, that, yeah. you know, whoever was taking care of him at the time, they made it happen, you know. Right. And, you know, there's plenty of guys, Shoney Carter, you know, a lot of different guys that, that, like I said, you know, were just entertaining. And so they're still, still around. You got a kid that just went up on the contenders, Mitchell site, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, you know, got a bad cut and it kind of affected his performance there mm -hmm. what do you think you think that guy's gonna get a call back too yeah I, you know i really think so because the fight was good five to some yeah. point he got a cut in a bad area yeah yeah he did get a pretty you know nasty cut from an elbow yeah um and the way what i saw too was they took four guys on, on the show and they didn't take the guy that beat him so what i would take from that is they obviously wanted to get mitchell right yeah. they had their sights on him they wanted him, and when he lost, they were just kind of shocked, I would assume, and they didn't yeah. even take the other Could've guy. give him another chance. To right. they, and the other guys already fought there. This was his second fight and got the win, and they still didn't sign him. So mm -hmm. to me, that seems like Mitchell's on their radar, and so he just needs to get, you know, get things fixed and, and, and improve a few areas and, and continue to develop. He's a young kid still. It's like 22, 23 years old. Yeah. 
So, you know. You He's grown a lot, man. The guy is, man, he puts in a lot of work. I, I didn't get a chance to talk to him over here in Vice A. He's yeah. training at OKG. Yeah. But uh, I know the guy, I mean, at first when I used to see him, you know, over there at Warriors Cage and when he fought and everything, he kind of yeah. just like a cocky loud mob dude. Yeah. When he fought Joey. Joey, yeah. And couldn't stop Joey, you know. And then all of a sudden, he kind of like invested more time and time and time. And he just evolved, man. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, he know? did. And so, you know, it was a little setback for him, I would assume. I don't think this is going to be a setback for him. I mean, just talking to him in his age, he's got such a hard drive that he can actually take this and reevaluate it. Yeah. You know? And he's so – he's – He's very energetic in what he wants. Yeah. And he definitely wants to throw hands. Yeah. So yeah. Whatever facet that comes in, I think he'll get another two fights wherever he needs to go and then get right back called. Oh, I'm sure he'll get the call back for if he yeah. as long as he shows improvement Proof, from that right. fight. And that's why I say it was a setback because if he didn't have to show improvement that fight, he would have won the fight and he would be in. So it's a setback because now you gotta go out and do a little bit right. more work to get yourself there. But I think it's good. But either way, it opened his eyes, yeah. and it also showed his toughness and his character. You know, he was in bleeding crazy. Yeah. I was there. I don't know if you saw. I was yeah. there. I, wa- I went and watched the fight, and, I mean, he was re- – Have you ever been cut during a fight? Me, no. I've been fortunate. I've never uh, had any – I think the worst I've had was, like, a little black eye. In a, well, in a street fight, yeah, I've been cut a few times. <laughs> but in the cage, no, I've, I've always my, – my, my mentality when I was fighting was the, the least amount I get hit – more likely I am to right. win. So I just fought smart. I feel like that's what helped me get the wins that I got was not because of talent so much, but athletic abilities and intelligence. Right. Helped me beat guys that were better trained than me, you know, that were training at Team Oyama and training at these gyms yeah. that were big. When we were just a small little school, I didn't even right. have, you know, I'm training with Greg Rogers, who's 6'3", 260 pounds, and Jason McCoy <laughs> and Mark. And Steve Dennison, you yeah. know, I didn't have one guy under 240 pounds to train with, really, besides Nuno, you know, Tony. Yeah. But even then, he was off and on, too, and, and doing some other things and stuff. And because Paul and those guys all started their own little thing, and yeah. Morris, Adako, and a bunch of different guys, you know, they started having these little cross trims and all these different things. So, Ernie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 pretty much. So, yeah, it was a little, little different at that time, you know, it's just crazy stuff. Is there any chance that you might have Mitchell back? Yeah, I don't think November would be possible. No, but I mean. But yeah, he'll be back. Okay. I mean, if if it's needed. Kind yeah, I mean he's my back. champion, so yeah, obviously I'd exactly. like to have him back. Um, you know, I still like to even make the Usman fight if possible. You know, both yeah. guys lost to Dontel, so I think that would be something that could catapult one of the two guys too. Yeah, you oh, know, yeah, to get him back into the mind. mark. You know, so that's something um, that I would consider. I just couldn't do it in November. Um, like I said, pretty much November's done. You know, I'm not releasing anything yet. The only fight I would say is for sure, 100%, is uh, Art Hernandez is going to fight Kane Carrizosa. Really? Oh, yeah. wow. Kane's going to be a good fight. Yeah. Right on. Yep. So, and That's Art's retiring. So he 55. Wants 55s, yep. And right Art wants to make this his last fight. So, he asked for a good one, and I figured, sheesh, I mean... That's a good fight right there. But it did yeah, test, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not something to have in your resume. And then you, get, you, you, you might be able to bet. catch Kane slipping, yeah. too. You never yeah. know. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it, it, I think it's going to be a really good fight. Uh, you know, But most of the card's going to be primarily mixed between uh, some of the guys we pulled from the two amateur shows. Yeah. That's why I did the pro in the beginning and the pro at the end, so I can pull talent from the two shows in between. Yeah, smart. Put them on the end, and then they'll also be able to turn around and fight again in February next year when we have right. the first show. Good deal. And then they'll be able to do the amateur part again and then get a couple fights in between. Makes so, sense. Yeah, so it was better that way than staggering them, you know, in my opinion. No, it, it is. Yeah. That's smart. I mean, this way it gives them t- a chance to test the water. And then get a little boot camp to see because yep. you're making that initial investment. Mm-hmm. They're coming in as a prospect. Yep. And anytime you do that, you want to test your value of what your investment Plus is. So you that's smart. Make that holiday cash, man. Yeah. 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 You know, I November's going to be uh, the 35th anniversary, too, of the Toshi. Yeah. And uh, we're going to Friday nights, too, this show. That's, that's, really, that's going to yeah. be awesome, that's man. That yeah, right there cool. alone is a Yeah, huge. it's going to be fun. Yeah, so, you know. It's huge. Uh, we we could be staying on Fridays, you know, we'll see how things go, but I think it was just, you know, like I said, we're trying to work some different angles yeah, and try some so new things and do some stuff and working with the amateurs and trying to pull in some different guys from out of the area and stuff, it, it helps having it on a Friday, definitely. So I'm excited for, for this, uh, this show coming up. And the, the amateurs that you see now, is there anybody, well, 
that hadn't fought at touch yet, but that you see that really stands out? Uh, Al Gonzalez, I think that guy's. Uh, yeah, I always try to get this guy on the show, but he's always training, man. Uh, I'm gonna come get him he's, for November. He's a beast. I'm, yeah. gonna, I'm gonna take him from the amateur ranks after if he wins his next fight. I'm gonna right hope on. I'm gonna go harass Jeremy and tell him you gotta let him come with Tachi. <laughs> was, you know, I got some ideas in my head that I can make happen for November. Some good fight with him and another local fighter. So that's my hopes. Yeah, yeah, we'll that, see what that's happens. Good. You know, I don't want to predict the future but hopefully he comes through and uh, pulls out that win i think he's fighting september 22nd and uh hopefully that goes well and if yeah does, they're on their next card yeah yeah, he's, yeah. i believe in fresno yep fresno yeah, so be, that's his hometown too right so hopefully it, it goes well for him and then maybe i can pull him out and put him on the tachi show and but yeah he's the one of the few guys that i've been kind of peeping out that hasn't actually came to our show or isn't on our yeah. show you he's know? been working man it seems yeah. like every show they fight lately he's been on it yeah yeah he's been, so he's been grinding been working, yeah, yeah for sure and so you you know he's he's he seems like he's got some good talent and i got it like i said i'm i'm, I'm thinking i'm gonna have an offer them to fight but i'm thinking fabian and him would be a great fight oh yeah Boy, that'd Bono. be good local and then local boom. and both like there to throw down and it's that would know, be yeah it would especially right there yeah exactly yeah, so you know especially throwing it out there guys if you want to fight <laughs> hey what about at, at it's available five i know antonio hood's been uh, boasting about Emilio out there. Yeah, there's a possibility for that too. I've talked to uh, Antonio. You can't uh, buy any 145s that want to fight him. Yeah, oh, I got we some. We know better. Yeah, we got guys. We got guys. Hey, if Uni fought him, beat him. Yeah. So. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's true. You know, yeah. and I'm not sure what weight Uni's going to do pro at, though. Yeah. So I don't know if he's going to do because he, he seemed like he struggled a little bit to make 55 on the, the yeah. last amateur show. That's day of weigh so Yeah, but that's, still, that's, that's 10 more pounds in just 24 hours. That's a lot. Yeah, and he's you know? a big guy. He's dude. a big kid. Yeah, he's, he's tall. And he's, 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 he's a tough guy, man. That guy can – I've watched a few of his fights, and, man, he takes some beatings sometimes, he and he's just one of those guys yeah. that toughs it out, comes through, and just surprises you. Right. Yeah, he takes does. takes the dub. Yeah, every fight I've seen him in, yeah. actually, he comes and, like – He's a it's start, all, yeah. slow starter, and the next thing you know, he's all over you. Because up for yeah. like the grave digger, man. Yeah, right back. yeah. Hulk Hogan. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> back, he does yeah, it, Yeah, it's like he hears the crowd, he starts walking around <laughs> doing his Hulk Hogan move and yeah. comes back. So, yeah, now there's going to be a good kid talent on this show. The main event for August is going to be good. Anthony Aguilar is a stud kid from uh, – Parlier trains with uh, the Avalos brothers and yeah. Mike and on those guys, and Jose Navarro's a stud from Madera. So I think that's going to definitely a 125 pound fight. It's going to be something to watch, that's for sure. Uh, both kids are definitely on the radar to uh, to come for November too. So yeah, we got a kid here that helps out on the show. He's part of our staff, Paul Alessandro, 125er. Yeah, and he he is injury. He just wants to do pro. He don't want to do no more amateur stuff. You know, I told him, well, we kind of got a little insight. Just let us know if you're serious yeah. about it. But uh, I was hoping he could be here today, but his his work kind of conflicted with it. But hopefully in the future he will be. Yeah. But um, And then uh, when was it? Was it last week? Oh, no, not last week. The week before we had Cody Gibson. Mm -hmm. And then he's. Yeah, know, I mean, he's more than welcome home. He said, he man, I, knows I, that. Yeah, he wants to. He's got the itch again now that. He said he just wants to go and compete. Yeah, he, he just don't likes care about all the bullshit. He just yeah. want that part's over. He's yeah. already did whatever, and if he gets a call back, great. If he don't, he's not gonna worry about it. Yeah. So this time he has a different mindset. Now he's settled, which I think he's gonna be more dangerous. Yeah, when you're like no giving up. Yeah, you know, yeah. and especially with a guy like Cody who's already dangerous and got the yeah. great granite chin and good wrestling yeah. you know and he's always he's uh, always in every fight dog every fights. fight and he's always improved yeah every time i've seen yeah. him he's always improved so oh, no. that's pretty scary man. i watched him from his first fight i told mm -hmm. him one day you're gonna be a champion you know and I, I figured he would be in the ufc and be a champion i think he just kind of got some bad yeah he got some bad breaks back some caught, bad breaks yeah. and then got Fight caught in the country stuff and yeah you know just you know i think he just kind of got just a bad path on that point but yeah if it, i think if he did it all over again He'd be in the top five. Yeah, he should still it's be. It's just his size and strength and all his different abilities mixed together. Just, I mean, they're they're fantastic. Yeah. You just never see Quinn in that kid. Man. No, no. Never, you no, you no, never no. see him he's even hurt. He's always in shape, I mean, he's just, he's always he's in just shape. a tank and, and for, his, for 135, too, and just a workhorse, you know, and his, he's just a great guy. Okay. Um, Joe Soto. I haven't had a chance to talk to him lately, but, God, the guy's – 
looks awesome right now. He's yeah, small. He's, he's uh, he was well. He's considered dropping to one twenty five. One twenty five. Yeah. So I think he was doing some test runs and, and trying out some things just to kind of consider that as an option for his future. Because he looks good. That's the best I've ever seen him. I've never seen him like, that Jesus shredded. Christ, um, man. Amazingly shredded. But yeah. he was walking around at his fight weight though, thirty five, wow. thirty six. You know, one forty. So you're going to see that definition a lot more oh, than you exactly. do. You know. The when you're walking around on 155 and cutting the 35s, you know, yeah. like Joe can do like no other. That guy cuts weight better than anybody I've ever seen on this planet. Well, have I you mean, been to his gym? You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah, like I know. degrees <laughs> in that place. It is. Day. You can just <laughs> sleep in there and lose 20 pounds. But yeah, he cuts weight like no other. I mean, I've witnessed it going down to Mexico in these places where he's called on five days' notice and calls me and is like, I'm 156. What do you think? Well, I've never seen you miss weight before. So <laughs> next thing you know, he's bald, shaved his back hairs and everything. Standing on the scale, 136, you're like, God, that guy's an animal. Wow. Man. Yeah. A lot of people that, that are not in the fight game that don't li pay attention to it, they, they just see the fights. Mm -hmm. But there's a whole different fight that's eight weeks out, 24 hours before, you know, that, that to train to show up every day. Yeah, if you don't win that first fight, you're going to lose the second one. And then you then you got to show up and cut. And I've, I've watched guys just fall apart. You know? mm -hmm. I mean, I missed weight before when you're, yeah. my, from my first fight back. I'm yeah. like, I can't hit this last fight. Yeah. I just can't. You know, and I yeah. mean, I remember sitting in front of surges and just be like, nope, you're sitting here, dude. Done. I'm sorry. Done. And I've watched kids cry. <laughs> you know, yep. I've, I've sitting there. I'm like, no, I'm just going to break this window off and get out. Get out, yeah. But, I mean, Joe just, he never, he never, never quits. It's, it's like a granite will. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. And it's, yeah. hard, it's hard to beat that. No, he's got just this special drive, you know, that once he sees something that he wants, he'll work, do whatever it takes to get it. You know, and that's what's got him this far in his career, too. I mean, he's not the biggest 35er, he's not the fastest one, but he's just pure hard work, talent. I mean, his wrestling abilities, his jiu-jitsu obviously is just far. Insane, like I said, I would yeah. still to this day, I mean, put him against any of the top guys in the world and bet money on Joe, you know, nine out of ten oh, times right. when he's not playing around, you know. Right. He would have beat that guy and that Eddie Bravo if he wasn't toying around with him on those leg locks, you know. He would have shooting. He would have just, <laughs> yeah, he would have just took the guy down and controlled him, you know, because there's no way those guys are going to out-wrestle him. That's why no. when he wanted to take control of those fights, he did it. You know, whenever he was sitting there playing footsies with the last guy, that guy's an expert. You can't play footsies with the guy that plays footsies. You right. use your wrestling. You go lay on top of him, yep. chase his neck, you know, do some different things. But Joe just likes to – he's a showman, you know. Yep. And he's so confident in his abilities that he does go out there and just say, screw it, let's play around, you know. And, and it's fun. It's, it's fun, me. yeah. <laughs> you know, and he, you know, he takes it like a champ. So I love that guy. He's, a, you know, he's one of my close, close friends. And you know, like I said, we're at. He was at my wedding. I've been to his weddings. You know, kids' birthday parties, those type of things. And right. Known the guy for, you know, 15 plus years almost. Yeah. This little bitty town of Porterville. Porterville. That's why it's, it's crazy. Between me being a promoter, matchmaker, you got Mark Holly, who's a commission judge and ref, and Jason they McCoy. All basically, everybody back from into there that basically business. somehow yeah. or another is working within the mixed martial arts yeah. community That's now. You got cool. Joe Soto UFC, you got Javi going, yeah, going Yeah, Javi Bellator. Bellator. I mean, you got so many different things that helped each other pave those paths. You know, it's insane. So it's it's worked out good so far. It's kind of neat, man. Oh yeah, absolutely. Is there anything in MMA you want to see change, like rule wise or anything? Uh, you know, because you've seen, I, I've seen beginning. One of the end. things I don't like, I don't like those front little kicks to the shins and to the front of the knees. I think those are pointless and they're pretty much just damaging, waiting to happen. Yep. It's so close on the border of legal, illegal. Um, uh, the weight cutting thing, you know, I, I, I think it makes sense. You know, at first I was completely against it, but when you're starting to see more and more frequently now, more fighters pull out. They tell you it's injury, but most it's of the water. time it's weight and other problems that are uh, causing this problem, you know, because they're trying so hard to get down. I'd like to see them implement more weight classes in the lower weights uh, because over the 205 mark, it doesn't really matter. Right. But, you know, 185 to 205, too, that's not, you don't really see guys drastically killing themselves to make right. weight. 170 and below, those guys are trying to cream it because they're already small guys and are bigger guys trying to get to those smaller weight classes. Yeah, Joe Rogan was saying, you know, it, it's not PEDs that's bothering the smaller weights, it's the weight cut. It you is. Get a, you get a guy at 135 on the weigh in, and then all of a sudden, next day he's 160. Yeah. The guy's, then the guy he's fighting, natural walk around is 142, 145. Yeah. You know, it, it, that's, it's, yeah. it's, it's scary. a huge difference, but it's also yeah. not healthy. It's just not healthy. I mean, I can't tell any. I mean, there's no way anybody can sit here and tell me that if you lost 16 pounds in the last two days and then you put on 30 pounds the next day in 12 hours, 
that that's good for you. And it doesn't feel good. It doesn't. It really doesn't. It you doesn't. Know, you know, most of the guys that perform well are within 12 pounds or so of their weight class at right. all times. And that's why those are the guys like Donald Cerrone and them that are willing to just be like, oh, yeah, I'm ready. Yeah. Because they're always right around that weight. They're not really strenuously killing themselves to make those weight classes, right. you know. And, and it pays off for a lot of the people, I think, in my opinion. But rule-wise, I mean, like I said, there's a few little I, – I wish they would change the – the qualifications to become a ref and a judge you know i think in nevada and these other places your problem is you get stuck with uh boxing judges right and just because you're licensed to work for the commission i don't think that should qualify you to automatically just be assigned to a an mma okay. fight yeah. you know you should have to go through some type of training we watch fights i would assume you know like watch some fights that were close decisions let these guys make their own decision and then compare them to those judges at night who people majority felt was right or wrong and see how their scorecards compare, what they see things, you know, right. how they see things. You know, they need to get out of this, if you're on top, you're winning the fight type of thing, you know. Right. Uh, I see a lot of guys on their back throwing elbows, smacking dude, and he's just laying there like this going two, 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 you know, couple to the body. Right. And they're like, oh, he's on top, he's winning the fight, you know, and a lot of judges score it like that too because of control. Right. But, you know, I just, some of those things I think would change if they had MMA fighters, retired fighters, those type of guys doing those judging and, and well, and, and MMA's finally get to that point where there's going to start being a whole round of guys that can go in. Yeah, yeah. Well, there should already be though. You, you know, know what I mean? Yeah. Those boxing judges were never even boxers. That's the thing either. Right. Those guys just sat down and there happened to be a part of a family. They were a lot more. <laughs> yeah. Got the job. Exactly. Right. Yeah. They worked you know, for the. They work for the state. Most of them. Yeah. Most, most of them, them are correctional are like officers. That. Highway patrols, officers, doctors, you yeah. know, they all work for the states for the most part and have you a You got fighters like Trigg, you know, that yeah. is in there and doing it, and everybody loves the way he refs. Yeah, he's a good I ref. He visualizes and sees everything that's going on. He's been in yeah. those positions, so he understands those things. And, you know, I, I'd probably prefer him to sit down and judge my fight. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. Rather than, you know, that – I can't remember the lady's name from uh, – Las Vegas that just blew like 30 different decisions in the last two years. Yeah, she it got still, out of hand. Still gets assigned. Yeah. Like, how do you even, you have such a variety of people that would be dying to go take those spots. Yeah, right. But yet she gets it all the time and it just, it baffles me, you know. I thought that they required it because I know at one time um, I was talking to Abe Bellardo and he, and he told me, dude, why don't you go ahead and apply for that thing? I go, yeah, I gotta go. I used to judge it. WEC, yeah. you know, and all that, and then uh, amateur boxing for a lot of years. I said, I go, that would be kind of cool. But then they said, oh, and then you got to go and do all this training. You got to take what's the name school. Oh, they want you to go. You That's for McCarthy. That yeah, I can yeah. shoot. Give me a test. I can tell you exactly. But, everything. you know, and – that's cool, you know, McCarthy's school of training, yeah. you know, for, I think it's primarily for referees. I don't really want to say it's for judging, judges, you know, oh, and I okay. think it's, uh, I mean, it's, you can't, you can't learn by going and sitting in a guy's class no, and saying, right, no. you know what I mean? That's like me going to sit with this engineer over here and saying, oh, I'm going to learn to do all your video and everything and in I'll a five hour seminar. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's not going to happen. Yeah. You got to actually experience it, understand knowledge of the sport knowing jiu-jitsu knowing these different right. things what positions these guys are in some of these guys are like i said mitchell i think perfect example that referee let mitchell get pounded in the back of the head about six times if you see after the first round when he goes to sit down he's got a lump on yeah. the back of his head yeah. and i'm sitting right there from the cage and i'm watching the guy hammer straight down on top of him and i'm saying back of the head and it's a quiet venue right there's only like 60 people in there yeah. and the ref has to hear you but he's just sitting there still just watching it happen, and it just baffles me, you know. But yet a guy like Angel DeAnda goes out there, punches the dude. That guy's already out on face down. Angel throws one hammer fist, and they're like, whoop, separate, yeah. you know. And so the inconsistency is just ridiculous. Yeah, that's crazy. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like, okay, well, what is it? You know what I mean? To me, if anybody's face down and if a guy automatically throws us, that's automatic to me. You should just step up because right. there's no way possible you can hit a guy in the face or the cheeks or the ears yeah. coming straight down when he's face down on the canvas. Yeah. You have to come up and under and come from the side. There has yeah. to be an edge. Yeah, yeah, it has to be an edge to it. You know, So those are things that these guys should be looking for as referees. I've ref 100-plus fights, and I've yet to have a guy yelling out, what are you doing? Or you know, and, I'm yeah. like, and that's when I realized, like, man, it's not as bad. As they make it look like no, they, really they, they they get themselves flushed it's right in front of you yeah. yeah you know and and i was in a little gladiator chase you know like 12 feet it felt like 
These big you're ass the dudes. Fight. Yeah. <laughs> you know, big you're old dudes you're trying to club them. me. I'm swinging. Woo, woo, woo. You know, dodging, ducking, and weaving, and doing all these crazy stuff. So, yeah, I think that if they can fix those areas, that'll be the best best bet. And Good that's going to help evolve the sport more because it's really damaging to people's careers when you got incompetent people. All right. Eddie, Hope, Eddie, well, Eddie Aguirre is asking at, or saying Adelaide Bird is a great rep. Is she one of the ones you get referred to? Oh, absolutely. Eddie just, yeah. <laughs> Eddie likes the baits, man. Yeah, he likes the baits. Yeah. Word, word Trump. Yeah, hashtag me too. Yeah, Eddie, uh, she's terrible. Yeah, he, I mean, I can point out several fights. I mean, you can go watch the Contender Series last year with uh, Casey Kenny and Adam Antolin. Yeah. I mean, it was a – there's nobody in the building that thought Casey lost that fight. Yeah. And she's, she gave Adam a round that he wasn't even close, you know. And uh, she came back and did it the next week to another high-profile fight. But, you know, she's had some good fights too, you know. It's just inconsistency. But, yeah. I mean, sh how much MMA has she ever done? Does she even know what stripe you would have in jiu-jitsu or what you're doing if you walk right. in with a purple belt? Does she know what that means? Is she, You know, those are the things yeah. that she might not understand. True. And so she's boxing, judging it in a boxing sense, you know. And then also, when you don't have that knowledge, you think, oh, he's on top, he's winning. Like yeah, I said, because it's get just it. pressure. That's all yeah. it is. It's but not hey, advanced Eddie can love her. That's all good. I don't <laughs> care. <laughs> all right, we're going to hold that thought. There's another question I want to uh, bring up, but uh, we're going to go ahead and take care of some business. Shout out to the Spike and Rail uh, here in Selma, California. Uh, if you guys are in town or just cruising by and you, you guys want a good something really good to eat, Come in inside and mention MMA Fight Pass, and they're going to knock off 15% off that bill. And also, America, shout out to them, Ballater MMA, uh, Dragon House MMA, 559 Fights, and of course, Chachi Palace Fights coming up at the end of the month. We'll be right back after this. Sometimes they get the adrenaline flow. All right, we're back. To MMA Fight Pass, the Hammer Fist podcast here live from the Spike and Rail. I got my co host today, Van Velasco, aka Butter, for joining That's us. Right. Much appreciated, my friend. And TPF's own Richard Goodman, man. Yeah, we're going to go back to ask more questions about some of the things that uh, could be revised. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of weeks ago, in a, in a big fight in the UFC, uh, they made mention uh, of the 12-6 mm -hmm. uh, elbow. What's your opinion on that? What do you think they should do about that? Um, the, the situation, I think it really, like I said, you have to look at each fight how the situation occurs. Sometimes, like in this instance you're talking about last week, I mean, it's playing out illegal. Certain times, you know, you're throwing a, I don't, I don't agree with them, though, because I don't think they, they are too dangerous. Yeah. And especially in tight quarters, you can do so many more things. If you can just throw a straight elbow mm -hmm. down to a guy's face, right. you know, especially in clinches, anything, you can just elbow him and, and it's going to end a fight, you know, a lot faster and a lot more damage, you know, right. just like those front kicks that I really don't agree with too much. Um, so, you know, I, they got to figure out a way to get these guys from, from doing it. Or they got to just start penalizing them even harsher, you know. And if they do that, then that's going to eliminate it because it's going to be more on your mind uh, to to be, you know, watch what you're doing type of thing. But if it's just ah, it could be a point, could get away with it type of thing, which it happens. Yeah, like I said, inconsistency does. with back of the head punches and those type of things is what gives these guys a lean way to you know what, go ahead and try it, you know. Or I'm going to just do it. He's right here, bam. You know, which I can't think of any time in practice where I practice the technique of throwing your elbow yeah, never. straight down unless I was in a street fight, you know. That would be yeah. the only time I'd consider it. You know? <laughs> yeah. But yeah. you're considering everything in a street fight. Yeah, 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 I'll sport. bite your balls if I had to, you know. I'm trying to win. You know? <laughs> no yeah. don't, hey. don't, don't, don't put me in a triangle choke on the streets, people. You will get your nuts snatched. And, but the crazy thing is when they're explaining the rules, there's like nothing straight up and down. You're, so if you do this and come down, it, yeah. you can get the same effect. And that's why you shouldn't even – it shouldn't even be – it, it, it should only be motion. forward motions, in my opinion, you know. Because even when you get to the uh, side control, you know, and they used to be able to let you throw these little back, you know, because they consider it cushions, right. you know, With the back the, of your arm. But half inch of muscle. Yeah, but even then, you should still be able to just drive straight down like that anyway. So, I, I mean, I think they should take the entire motion away, period. And once they see that motion even being con, they should just automatically separate you 
warn you if it happens to cause right. damage then you know possibly disqualify you depending on how bad the damage is because when you see those punches happen they're almost fight enders every time yeah they are you know and and so it's a big difference you know a guy getting rocked and having to recover and also it costs usually like it costs Eddie Alvarez to fight in my opinion where he was dominating and, yeah, and was about to get a win and now this guy recovers comes back cracks him a few good ones and then it's next done. thing you know it's done and now Poirier is going to make the big money against Diaz you know? I know for some time that could have been Alvarez and Diaz which I would have loved to have seen that would have been a better fight <laughs> I know for some time people were they were trying to say just to eliminate elbows overall yeah no because I mean that would just that's that's elbow. taken away from a fight though yeah I mean that's yeah. a fight you know and you, that's a intrigue you know intriguing part of the sport because it you know it also keeps jujitsu guys from just holding you yeah right because if you can only punch you chances are they can lock the shoulder lock the arm do these different things these techniques that they can use rubber guard and stuff and you can't do stuff but with those elbows if you can can open them get in tight do different things you're able to bypass some of those things that'll keep you from being able to throw punches and stuff inside the fight in certain positions too. Like I said, it, you can't get enough power behind a right. punch. And I, I agree with the <coughs> six yeah. because you can you generate you're generating body you're generating motion. body power. Motion. I mean, coming over the top or if you're throwing a rising elbow, yeah. that's that's muscle. You yeah, know, yeah, instead yeah. of using my my 300 pound just to dive on somebody, hit them. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. I mean, exactly. It just, you know? doesn't make any sense. It's just, just to power drive yeah. somebody. It's, yeah. It takes. I mean, it would no take away takedowns pretty much too if those were legal. Yeah. Because anytime somebody shot in for oh, a single yeah. or a double leg, you just elbow them fifty times straight up and down, yeah. and they're gonna fall out. You know, it, it, yeah. it's gonna happen. And then you know, then with the inconsistency, if it hits the spine on accident one yeah. time, that shit hurts. That's right. <laughs> I mean, it, it does it, not it feel could well. Be, yeah, a lot of permanent damage could come from those type of mm -hmm. you know attacks. So, yeah, I would uh, I would definitely eliminate those. You know, like I said, just like those little, I just that shit irks me watching those guys kick right for that shin right below your knee. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, you know, like. Anderson Silva used to do it a lot, and I just John I'm just waiting for an ACL yeah, to blow because I know they won't yeah. do that in training. They will not kick you like because I've been in training. Oh, you, yeah. Those aren't even allowed. Just like knee bars and stuff that you don't do, stuff that you will only do in a fight. You know, so if you can't do it in training, you really shouldn't be doing it in right. a fight. You know, in my yeah. opinion, because it's oh, it's going to permanently damage your teammate. Well, it'd probably do that too in a fight. You know, and every and every coach's mentality is like, well, you protect your teammate, you kill your opponent. Yeah. But you got, you also have to remember it's a sport. You know? Yeah, exactly. Everybody has to go home to a family and, yeah, and still. You want them life. to live to fight another day. Exactly, and walk properly. Yeah, I yeah. know. It's a, you know, so those are just the two of the things that I would, you know, I would pick on a little bit. Getting to uh, back to a little bit on the amateur level, what do you think would be good to be implemented to help prepare these guys to get ready to turn pro? I mean, they don't have the elbows now. They got safety gloves they're using. You think at one point, uh, after so many fights, they should be allowed to do this? Yeah. Like the shin guards, you know? You know yeah, the shin guards. Fight, I, I, to me, it almost looks like a fight, anyways. The moment yeah. they take out their shin guards, if you took an average person from the parking lot and brought them to an amateur fight, they wouldn't even know if it was right. pro yeah. or amateur once they don't have those shin guards on. True. You know, so. In that aspect, I, I still wouldn't add any more rules to it just because of the, the fact that they're not getting paid. Yeah. And the, the, you know, even though, and, and like shows like mine, they're insured and stuff, and Jeremy's 559, you know, they have full coverage insurance and stuff. It's still just risky, you know, for those guys to, to go out there and do that at that part of their career. So I, I would still keep the rules the same. Um, I, I wouldn't even add the elbows just because of the cuts and stuff. Yeah. Because amateurs, the way they're getting their experience is by fighting frequently. Yeah. Right? And so if you throw in those extra things, that's going to create more injuries, more cuts, more things that are going to keep these guys on the shelf longer yeah. and not be able to gain that experience and get those amateur fights out of the way and do it the right way to be get that experience yeah. to become a good pro. A, good answer. Yeah, I have a lot of people saying, well, they should let – but then I kind of thought that Then they too. might as well fight pro, though. Yeah, I mean – That's just like boxing. You, yeah. you know, you're amateur, you wear headgear. Yeah. I mean, if they just took the headgear off, they might as well pay them to fight. Exactly. The whole point of that part is to gain the experience without getting your brain yeah, knocked out and yeah. to learn, you know. And then a lot of these guys adjust once they take that headgear off. You know, they understand the difference now. Yeah, so. that makes a lot of sense. I, the lot of thing I don't understand is a lot of these amateur guys are, you know, they're sacrificing for the cat doing this, but they're getting six to ten fights in amateurs. Yeah. I mean, I don't I don't know. I mean, I, every guy's got a different situation, but I can't see why, you know, you're – you got a guy who's seven and three. I'm like, why have you not made the jump? You're killing yourself, and you still haven't. Is it a lot of times guys aren't getting the call, or is it just don't themselves? You know. Uh, I would say majority would be themselves, um, but also 
some of these guys have amateur goals too, like uh, Avalos wanted to become a state champion. You're not going to get that fight in two or three times. Right. And so what if you go out there too and you start out two or three and oh and then you take a loss in amateur, do you really want to turn pro after that or do you want to get yourself a little bit more right. confidence, build a couple more fights and now you're six and one and you're looking a little bit more, you've been training a year. See the way I look at it, uh, amateur you should be using that to, to train more. Yeah. Because until you're a black belt in all categories, you don't ever have a camp. Yeah, you know, yeah. you, you should be in camp all the time. Right. This is what you want to do for a living. So you got to keep going. And, and for them to do that, you know, like I said, they sometimes it might take six to eight fights for that guy to right. get his purple belt finally, feel comfortable. And now imagine making your debut if you had took six amateur fights first. Oh, it would be the night and day. All those first six fights you fought were nothing, and now you're coming out to fight right, a pro was, debut, and you have that jiu-jitsu and all this experience behind you, and this guy's only fought one time, and, you know, he's a blue belt still or a white belt still, you know, and, right. and so now you really have a mismatch when you don't even realize, even though they're both debuts. This guy put in the work in the amateur, learned, put two years in, got used to fighting in front of crowds, do right. things, protected himself a little bit, and now he's ready to make that adjustment. I, and I fully respect that, but mm -hmm. coming from the old school, like, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean it's it's it. Your sacrifice your body, make some money out of it, you know. But because the, they can't pick up sponsorships, you know. There's yeah. there's some people trying to to call it different things, but you can't sponsor it. You know, you still have to work a job, and if this is a career move you're gonna make, yeah. there's a timeline you gotta look around. You mm -hmm. know, you gotta pay attention to that. And these a lot of these guys are coming on wrestling phenoms into the MMA. You know, then you know bypassing calls all together just to fight. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and for unique situations, I mean, some of those guys don't need to. To right. do the amateur fights, right. um, you know, but that's a unique situation. That's, like but said, that's a rare occasion. It's a rare yeah, occasion, yeah. you know. Some of these other guys need it, and if they are planning on making this a career, I mean, it's not like you're going to go out and get rich off your first three fights, anyways. Oh, never. You know what I mean? You're not going to make it until you actually make it. So, to me, like I said, you can protect yourself, take less damage, and do things, and and mature yourself in the fight game in an amateur level, where you're probably going to be better than yeah. a lot of the guys you're fighting. Or risk it, and you might take a couple losses in the pro because you weren't ready yet, and now you're 0 and 2, or and you know, and you. now <laughs> you can't even get a fight. Right. You know, so it just depends on the, the situation. Each situation is unique for that individual and what their abilities are, and where they're going, and where they started, what they have in their backgrounds, right. where the gym they're from. You know, a lot of things play into those factors of what I would decide to do with a career. You know, with each different person. And it's, it's amazing to me that the sport that was. Uh, Everybody was against, and it was mm -hmm. it was a it was just an oddity. It has evolved and got rules and everything. We're still the sport itself is refining, but you have so many kids who are like, "What are you gonna do when you're up? I'm gonna fight." Mm -hmm. You know, back mm -hmm. in the day, it used to be boxing. You know, yeah. it was, you know, it was a far cry. But yeah. now MMA is such a huge sport. But you start looking at the payouts that they're getting mm -hmm. on, the, on the bigger line. They're really not. You have to have this the the, the team that you're talking about before. Yeah. you have to have the right crew. All together, um, that's going to determine how your uh, outcome, you know, is, yeah. and and it's tough, you know. Like I said, but the fighters still got to go out and do their job. Yeah. So I mean, no matter what, you can lay the ducks all out there. If they don't knock them down, it's not. It don't matter what you do. Right. You know. So that that part, it comes down to the fighter as well. But as far as like, yeah, you're right. You know, if you just get signed to the UFC, you're not just automatically a millionaire. Right. You know, it's almost like you're in your first. Basically, when you make the UFC, it's almost like you're in your tenth fight in boxing. Yeah, yeah. You know, because they've already done the first ten where you just went out there in boxing. They yeah. really hook you up. I mean, you can go out there and just mollywop the first twenty guys yeah. because in boxing you're not nothing until you're like twenty-five and zero, unless you're Lomachenko. Right. You know, who was a special <laughs> case, yeah. who was such a highly touted person though that he is reputation allowed him to jump right into the limelight, which it cost him too when he lost to Orlando Cedido, yeah. a guy who's 39 and 14, yeah. but he took setback. that fight, a yeah, setback, right. you know, it took him yeah. a minute to readjust, you know, and and so, like I said, those are things that could have been avoided had he took a little bit smarter approaches, but now, I mean, I'm not going to tell him what to do, he's oh, obviously, <laughs> the fuck, you know, probably one of the best, ball well, say top five, because I like Mikey Garcia better, yeah. but I would say, yeah, one of the top five boxers in the world. You know, but he could have avoided that setback. Yeah. You know, being a little bit smarter with with decisions and stuff. Right. So, you know, like I said, each thing is just it's just different. You know, depends on on the situation and the person. When you're doing matchmaking, is that something you take under uh, your hat? Uh, basically, what camps it come from, even though they have like the same records. Yeah, yeah. Um, because some camps are a little bit further along than others sometimes. Yeah. You know, and so. Um, 
you know, you just got to balance everything out as much as possible to try to make the best quality fights, you know. I'm not going to stick a two-time All-American wrestler, you know, against a pure Muay Thai fighter his first fight, you know. Just, <laughs> yeah. It's you just, see it, Because it's not UFC 1, <laughs> you know. Yeah, exactly, yeah. you know. And so it's just, you know, everything's different, you know, just every – Every single thing plays a part of how I try to make fights happen. You know, it's kind of like a big thing spinning in your head. You know, oh, that sounds like a good fight. Oh, this makes sense. Seen his tape, seen his tape, seen all these things. Oh, it seems like a good match, you know. Yeah. And then it's just making them, you know, trying to get them to do it after that. You know, hopefully it plays out. Hopefully both guys show up. You, you can't never guarantee anything. So, so your position, true. you're basically a, you're a researcher, politician, and a salesman. All in one. All in one. That's and, a, it. and a promoter at the same time, yep. Because I've I've always given you crap and like you only work a couple days a week. Yeah, you know, I wish. Like, oh, you know, it's but it's you're you're out there. You still have to see videos for fighters that are coming. Then you have to deal with guys like me. You're like, dude, just give me on the next quarter. Come on. Uh, I, you know, every I mean, thirty minutes I'll have a text message. Right. But and then ninety percent of them, when I give them the call and tell them I got to fight for them. Let me get back to you. Oh, hold on. Let me talk to my coaches. <laughs> well, my coach said. Hold on, I got to do this. Two weeks. Dude, but even then, I, if it takes two weeks, it's okay, though. I, I'm cool with that, you yeah. know. But I had just hate when you come back two weeks later and you're declining every single thing yeah. thrown your way. You don't want to fight. And you're like, yeah, no, you know, I, I just got a message just uh, three or four days ago from a, a person. You know, I'm not going to put them on blast. But, yeah, they were like, I got Go two ahead. fighters, <laughs> you know, at blah, 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 weights, <laughs> sent me videos all hyped yeah. up. You got any spots for them? I do, actually. I have so-and-so, you know, a debut. Oh, we don't like that match. I'm like, well, what part of that don't you like? Your yeah, guy's right. a debut. Yes, he's a debut. Fight, yeah. Like, what don't you like about it? They, you know, oh, well, I can't give you an answer to that. So then you just don't want to fight. That's and true. then I got a 35 or 3-1. and one. All right, you know, I got to fight. Oh, we don't like that matchup either. I said, so basically both you guys don't like any matchup I'm sending you. So yeah. you just don't message me if you don't want to fight. And those are the things you'll, you'll run into sometimes, you know. But you still got to take the courtesy to reach out to these people, you know, because you would – they're no different than me. They're all trying to do a job and yeah, trying yeah. to, you know, some people just might not have the knowledge or, right. you know, understanding of, you know, that kind of like pisses promoters off when you like hit them up with guys in the moment Wasting they the offer you fights. Man. And it's not like I was like, yeah, I got Chad Mendes ready to go. You know, it was like a fair fight in right. my opinion. You know what right. I mean? Like, and if, it, if anything, her guy probably had a little bit of advantage, you know, being that he had a little bit more jujitsu experience, right. you know. And so that's why it's just some of those things just baffle me a little bit, you know. But And I, I got to applaud you for your integrity because there's a lot of times that you're going to say, you know, I have this fight, this fight, and I've been, you know, on the side where I'm just listening to my, one of my training partners like, well, so-and-so's got this fight. I'm like, it's a good fight. You know, yeah. it may not favor you. It may not, like, you may not be behind, but it's going to be an even fight. Yeah. And that, that plays off to the show too because more often than not, you're having great performances across the board on the, on what's going on at Palace. and. Mm -hmm. That that itself, I mean, a lot of a lot of promoters have been known, you know, just landslide it, and this kid's gonna walk through this other kid, yeah, like yeah, you said, they're gonna yeah. walk through. That integrity is keeping it there. Is it, it has to be there for that level of competition out there mm -hmm. to keep the name going. Yeah, you know? absolutely. And that's I mean, a lot of responsibility it, on you. It's tough. It's tough, you know, and trying to please everybody. You got so many different people in so many different areas that you got to make happy too. You know, so it's a, like I said, it's a lot more mentally uh, stressful than physically. Obviously, you yeah. know, I'm lazy as hell. But uh, mentally, though, yeah, I mean, I, I probably sleep five or six hours a night if I'm lucky, you know, just because of thoughts and yeah. things and, and stuff going on Miles and trying to figure out. I get a text at 10 o'clock at night, I'm out, right. and now I can't sleep. I'm trying to figure out. I'm going through messages, going through everything, trying to think, you know, trying yeah. to figure out because, like I said, I try to put so much into the matchups rather than just you, you fighting, yeah. you know what I mean? I try to put – thought and so Something so it solid. has to make sense and stuff and yeah. so you know and then you get to know or yes and then you got to go try the, and so i really just you know and this is happening every day right. every day there's something going on mm -hmm. you know usually you book the fights you know six weeks out about three weeks into it that's when you know you start experiencing oh you know i hurt my toe yeah you know my hurt, got hurt again yeah either. i hurt my back yeah. you know or you know i'm actually gonna be out of town that week i didn't even realize it you know right. well, how the hell did yeah, you, all of a sudden, yeah, you know be here and, fighting yeah no oh more. my god what's going on here you know <laughs> can't get the day off work you know it's a good one i usually get you know it's like all right you know so but you're doing all this running around and you still end up getting married a couple weeks back yeah i kid yeah last last month was a, a very long month i'll tell you what you know i got married on july 7th I left to Oklahoma to go watch Mikey fight on the 13th. 
Uh, I actually moved to Lemoore the following weekend because that was the only weekend I had in between. And then I left the Mitchell's fight right after that. And then um, now I'm back for the next, uh, for this week and next week. And then I fly to North Carolina to drop my son off. And then I fly right back that same day and I'm going to Fresno to do the podcast over there. And then the fights are the next week. And then I leave my honeymoon the week after that. <laughs> At least you got a schedule on it, man. Uh, At least I, you, you know, hey, yeah. yeah, you well, know, and I still try to fit some two, 2K18 and some other things in between, you know, when I can get on my PlayStation 4. Let me know your gamer tag. We'll play. <laughs> I have to text it to you. Can't say it on live. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, you know, having a kid in college now, too. I got one in college. Who's wow. going to got one in high school and then I got the babies you know so time's flying man well the baby we're gonna probably be having another one Ooh. so right on slow hey. down that man that cost you money I know <laughs> but you gotta keep the wife happy you know right? she's, yeah. she's only got one baby you know it's not her fault that I was out there plopping them out left and right before that <laughs> you know it's not her fault so right uh, on now we're doing it the right way finally but congratulations you though thank you oh, yeah no I absolutely it's right a blessing on. I mean I, I got lucky Definitely. Good, good deal. Feel blessed. Couldn't, couldn't ask for more. Good deal. Um, getting back to Tachi, I know years ago, man, they used to have tournaments. Any chance in the future we might see something like that? You, you know, know whatever. Doesn't I, matter I would what love to. It's just we did those all non-sanctioned. Oh, every one okay. of those tournaments we did that. was non-sanctioned. Oh wow! Never yeah, really, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, I didn't yeah. makes sense. That. But yeah, I, that's what you know. That's why you have the flexibility. I mean, we could probably still do it, but it takes a lot more money to do the tournaments than it does to make individual fights happen. Simply because you have to have alternates and things and other stuff ready to go. That's why you oh, have when I when yeah. I did the little four-man tournament, I had to split it up between shows because we just like I said, if something happened like that night, you know, Omar or Usman breaks his hand. You know? punch me in the face. Yeah, so you know what I mean? Yeah. Bad guy. <laughs> so he breaks his hand. You know, then what? And if you had happened to, if you got TKO'd or something, you, they're not going to let you fight either because you're suspended. Right. right. And so then I'm going to have to pay a guy who's on standby who might not fight, who could fight, you know what I mean? Who could just come in there and only have one fight and win the whole tournament. Now that's not fair to me to everybody else. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? When four guys went to war and now one guy, like they used to do in the old UFC, one guy walk out there, pink. All right, I'm the UFC tournament <laughs> champion. I fought yeah. one fight, yeah. you know, as an alternate, you know. So it's like, and then even then, a lot of those guys have the alternates fight each other, like Bellator's doing with the Grand Prix. Right? Yeah. But what if those guys get hurt? That's why they're not doing their Grand Prix on the same night. Right. Because what if your alternates get hurt? One breaks yeah. his hand, knocking the other dude out. Now that guy's suspended, his hand's broken. Done. You're done, you know. And so it's just, you know, Javi's got paid to go s sit on standby, you know. You see yeah. how much that costs Bellator just to have him as a standby oh, yeah. for heavyweight. You know yeah. what I mean? Like <laughs> he's not complaining. No, I wouldn't. I was in New York. You know? yeah. Yeah, yeah, I didn't realize that. Yeah. 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 We just ain't got no me Bellator that money, goes. you know. Yeah. So or else I would love to take care of people like that if uh, I had yeah. the budget to do those things. You know, uh, I yeah. just ain't got a billion dollar Viacom backing me up. So <laughs> believe me, I give as much as I can to each fighter. And, and I will attest to that. Yeah, I will. I will honestly attest. I to do everything I can. I can too. I probably spend a thousand dollars in tickets that I give away because of people that just text me that I'm like, oh crap. And I can't get tickets, you know, this is the truth. I only get yeah. 10 tickets for each yeah. show. That's it. And so having so many friends and different people, I just buy them and give them out, yep. you know, just to do, just to keep people happy. You know, fighters, yeah. I need an extra room. A lot of them think that I'm getting a comp. I'm paying for that shit. Right. You know what I mean? There's, I just, there's a budget. There's yeah, a there's a budget that the casino gives me. And after that, it's not, and that's where they, that's where I think a lot of people misunderstand how our shows rank compared to all the other shows. Yeah. The other shows, whatever they don't spend, they keep. Right. That's not how it works for me. The, the, the casino has a budget and that's their money and what they what they don't spend goes back to them right. so it's not I'm not trying to take money from right. you I'm not like McDonald's trying to charge you 25 cents for a thing even though it don't go in my pocket you know right. I'm trying to help you out and give you everything I can it's just once it goes past that thing it comes out of my pocket now and I'm only on a set amount too. You know, yeah, I'm not yeah. like, oh, if you do this, you get more money. No, it's not. Whatever. And you're popping out babies like crazy. So yeah, you can't. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. You know. You know. Diapers ain't cheap. We but, all know that. But with with that whole thing, it plays back to when I like I said your integrity of this. That's why the matches are so good because, in my opinion, you, we're we're in a small area, but it's literally in between of everything that goes on with everybody yeah. and fighting. Yeah. I mean, no, we're six huge... hours from Vegas, two hours from I mean, Frisco, two hours, three, yeah. two hours from yeah. LA. Everything's right here. 
and you can put a show together that's off in the middle of nowhere that has the facility to, to house you, yep. pay you, and feed you. Exactly. I mean, you guys give out food comps too, and I mean, my whole family comes out and eats. Exactly. That's the whole the whole point of it. Yeah, you know? they all come and enjoy themselves and feel like they're treated well. You right. know? And, and that's what's more. That's why I said that's why I've always after the fights I go down to the bar, have drinks with every single person down there from top to bottom, first fight of the night to the last fight of the night. I'm gonna treat everybody with the same respect. Nobody's gonna be special treatment. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and that's the way I think that's what's kept us in business for a long time, too, is, like I said, you don't have a bunch of people calling around saying, oh, he screwed me over. And, yeah. You know, he did this and that. There might be a few little chit-chats on the download, but that stuff never touches my right. ear. So as long as I don't hear it, I don't really care about it, you know, because if it was something that was major, they would have been telling me. Yeah. You know what I mean? If there was an issue, you would have been hurt. I would have been hurt. You know what I mean? Somebody would have approached me. Somebody would call me. Somebody would text me. Something like that would have happened. So I think we're doing well by always being under the radar in that sense you were never the show where like i see on gladiator or other shows oh i've got my face broke and they don't have no insurance and they did me wrong and I, you've never you know like i said these guys leave they have an injury they call me i take care of them you know i've had a one instance you know where i couldn't take care of something and it wasn't my fault you know and i apologize you know and i try to do what i could to help the individual out but sometimes the fighters have to take responsibility themselves too when you get injured in a fight we tell you this is your claim form you need to take this and you need to be yeah. a big boy and you need to go take this to the doctors or whatever you're going to do. And some of these guys don't do that. And then they call you two years later and be like, hey, bro, I got a $1,300 medical bill. I need you to take care of that. Yeah. Well, I can't now. No, I'm not going to just go out of my pocket because you waited two years to go do something. You need yeah, to go take the paperwork and you need to go do what you're supposed to do. I'll help you through the whole process because Sarah the, that yeah. works with me, I mean, yeah. she's... You support see, staff is awesome. She's, she's, yeah, she's awesome. She's all over everything. She worked for the commission. She knows all the rules, everything. She'll get it all done for you. You just got to do your part. Right. And so, some, you know, I've had, like I said, a few cases where guys didn't do their part, and then I get a message yeah, literally you can't three years later. That. Right. Yeah. Like, you know, and I'm like, man, I don't know what you want me to do. You know my, I mean? my eye poke, she ran out, got my fiance, pulled her over, said, this is what you got to do. This is yeah. where I got to go. She lied everything out. So you guys you guys do do them right. If, yeah. if you don't do your job. Then you know, I can't help you there. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if I would have went out there and told you, and then you go home for three weeks and do whatever, and then they go a the year later you yeah. call me and be like, hey, man, I, I, you know, I forgot to go down the, and give them that claim form. Well, yeah. after a year, the claim's no good anymore. It it's just like in anything in insurance, you know what I mean? Any, it don't matter what kind of insurance you got. After you do something a year later, it's not, you can't claim it anymore. Right. It's just the law. It's just how it works, you know? And most of these guys are supposed to be having insurance anyways by law, you yeah. know? So that's where I kind of a little confused the way the commission forces you just to have insurance when the guys are already forced to have insurance, you know? It should be said on guys that have private insurance, they should be able to notify us ahead of time and say, I got private insurance, therefore I don't have to buy insurance for this guy on the card. But if this guy has a deductible or something, then we'll be responsible right. for it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But if he's on Medi-Cal and stuff or whatever it might be, you know, then there's no deductibles and stuff like that. There's no point in even using that insurance, right. you know, because we're already paying for it anyways. But it's it, that's an old rule, I think. It, yeah. be, it hasn't been evolved yet. There's, and there's, there's small things that on your side that you get affected and uh, we're just throwing hands and then we're going to go clean this, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, so you yeah, know, we do our best to stay on top of every single person and try to help them out in every single way. Uh, that I can't say, like I said. And if, if I'm lying, somebody call in and tell me besides Eddie and Gary. <laughs> there, you know what? We're winding down a little bit before we get out of here. Talk about your upcoming show, August 31st, TPF Prospect 2. Richard, give us a lowdown what we can expect on this card. It's a great, great fight card, and it's also got a nice little benefit uh, going on. The One of the feature fights that I, that I put on the uh, posters, and I... Uh, put on the commercials and stuff for Stevie O, Raybon, and Connor Sabrier. Uh, Stevie O is actually uh, donating his purse to a family of a child that they had up there that had cancer. Unfortunately, the child just passed away recently. Man. Yeah, and so the fight was actually dedicated for the kid in the first place, and so now they're going to take that money and help with the funeral expenses and stuff with the family. So, you know, to me, that's, you know, that was something that was real important to try to feature and, and do right. what we can to help there. Austin Lou from Fresno is going to be on here. I mean, like I said, Anthony Aguilar, Jose Navarro. Got some Team KO guys. David Morisco is on the card. Uh, Chris Luna with the, the one kick. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, got actually Marion Renault's brothers fighting on the card. Really? Oh, yeah. wow. Uh, oh. Yeah, he's fighting a heavyweight. Um, I got, didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, just recently uh, finished everything up with him. He's got his waiver and his feet down. He's just got a few little things to handle up. But uh, he just picked up some tickets and stuff yesterday. 
Uh, so it's going to be a bunch of different, you know, like I said, there's a, there's going to be a lot of different talent hidden within the card. Got the, you know, your co-host and the man running the cameras over there. His son's fighting on the show. Yeah, Julian. Yep, Julian will be on that card. So, I mean, there's a lot of local. Uh, I got two kids from uh, Valley Fight Club. Uh, Denzel Rosario, uh, I, want, I think that's how you pronounce his name, and Ryan Ballin at 170. So I'm still working on his opponent right now, but we'll have him set soon. Um, but majority of the card, is, it's stacked off the bottom. It's going to be a good show, I, I can promise you that. What time does it start? Uh, 6 o'clock. Oh, wait, 6.30, I think, because we're doing Friday. So uh, doors open fight? at 5.30. Uh, first fight starts at 6.30, I want to say. Don't quote me. It'll say it on the ticket, though. <laughs> yeah. Buy the ticket, you'll yeah. Know. Buy the ticket, you'll figure it out. It's a guest. Uh, um, but uh, usually they end pretty quick too. By nine nine thirty, you know, everybody can still have a good time. It's a Friday night too, so you can go enjoy the bar, you know, restaurants, whatever you want, and uh, just have a good time. I know I do every time. Right on. Hey, same here, man. It's so consistent out there. When you get there, uh, like they say, everybody knows ten people. You, you share that. And uh, they come out there, I guarantee they're going to be out there again. All right, man, that's going to be a wrap for this show. I want to shout out to Spike and Rail for doing what they do for us here at MMA Fight Pass. Van Palacio, Richard Goodman. This show is a wrap. Thank you. Right on, dude. Appreciate it. Yeah, man. no that's problem. Passed. Absolutely. Yeah, one by smooth, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and that's it, man. Yeah, it's just like a, no real formal stuff, man. Just shooting the bull getting the message what people want to hear i'm just yep. glad i live closer here now right yeah that's good i didn't realize i i didn't